Dollar Tree has a great selection of books, which is what we're going to be using in today's video is book pages. So head on over to Dollar Tree and grab a couple of books, or if you have some on hand or a thrift shop is also a great idea. So we're going to start out with these two oval pieces, these wood dowels from the Dollar Tree, and then these two round pieces that I got from Hobby Lobby. So we're going to go ahead and drill a hole into the middle of each of these round ones. We're going to be placing our dowel inside the hole on the bottom and then we're going to take our oval pieces and we're going to drill a hole into the oval piece on the side. Be careful when you're drilling here that you don't go all the way through the back and that your dowel can still stick in here because we want them to be a standing up piece. I'm going to cover these with some gray chalk paint and I'm going to cover all of the pieces. So these two bottom stand pieces and the two oval pieces. Once I have those covered, then we're going to take some book pieces. I'm just using a leftover book that actually came from the Dollar Tree. Um, and we're going to go ahead and fit them to the front of our oval pieces. I find this to be kind of the easiest way for these pieces that are raised. I just kind of rub my paper on top of the piece and then I take some scissors and I go ahead and cut out the shape. When you cut it out, like if you trace it out on the back, it's quite a bit larger than it is on the front and then you have all this excess. But if you don't mind the excess and you just want to sand that off, you can trace the back and do the same technique. I just find this to be a little bit simpler. So once I have the piece all cut out, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to Mod Podge it onto the front of our wood piece. Now you didn't probably need to paint the oval inside. I went ahead just so that we would have like a same uniform color. I'm just going to use some Mod Podge and my foam brush and I'm going to apply it to the front. I do go ahead and lay down my piece of book page and then I put some water on top of that just to make sure that it adheres really well to our piece of wood. I am going to use my roller as well to get out as many wrinkles as I possibly can. Once I have this all put together on there, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to apply the main part of our piece here. So I used my silhouette to cut out some little bunnies that were silhouettes. Now, I thought these were super cute. If you don't have a cutting machine, you could definitely print these off of the internet or you could use um, some stencils of bunnies or something like that. I'm just going to go ahead and lay these down on my book pages. I'm going to go ahead and use my scraper and I'm going to go over the vinyl piece. Now it is a little tricky going on top of book pages with your vinyl um, pieces. It can pull up part of your book pages because I use Mod Podge on these ones. I did not have any problems with that. Once I have them onto my front of my pieces, I'm going to take some watercolors I also got from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go around the outside of the paper. It gives it a little bit more of like an aged look. I've really been into watercolors lately so I've just been experimenting with using them in all kinds of different um, areas like crafting and painting. So once I do that on both of my pieces, I'm ready to add them to our wood dowels. So we're just going to place the wood dowel into the middle of where we drew our holes and then we're going to place it down into the bottom of where our holes are. This is super easy and it makes this really cute Easter decor piece. Let me know what you think about this one. So recently the company Cute Bee sent me this adorable DIY book nook kit. Now these are pretty popular right now. I've seen them all over Pinterest and TikTok. They're pretty adorable. You put them together and then they sit inside your shelf looking like a book and a little fairy adventure kind of thing inside your bookcase. Now this particular company's 
uh, book nook, if you can tell. It comes with all the pieces. It, it fits together like a puzzle. And then there are stickers and things that you stick onto some of the pieces as well. This is a really detailed kit. I think this would make a wonderful gift, especially for any kind of book lover in your life. If you're not into this kind of magical pharmacist look that they had sent me, you can also choose from several different versions on their website. If you're interested, I do have a link down in my description box along with a discount code that you can click on and you can find one of these really adorable book nooks. Now, one more exciting piece to this book nook that they sent me was the company is willing to do a giveaway, which I was super excited to do. So I will leave all the details for the giveaway down in my description box if you are interested in uh, winning one of these really cute DIY book nooks. I think they are adorable. They come very detailed. The panels are very detailed as you can see here. And like I said, they fit together like a puzzle. There is some glue that is required that doesn't come in the kit and a couple of batteries because these do light up. But otherwise, everything else for the kit comes included inside the box. I am going to be putting this together and then I am going to show you in a separate video what it ends up looking like. I can't wait to share it with you guys. Stay tuned for my next video to see what this super cute DIY book nook looks like. And don't forget to go down in the description box and check out the giveaway details. Now let's get on to the video. So we're going to start with one of these frames from the Dollar Tree. This is a five by seven. I'm just going to go ahead and take out the pieces. I'm going to be using the insert piece here and another piece from my book. Now I went ahead and cut off the excess pieces around the edges just to make sure that it fits onto my paper. I'm just going to use some tape here and I'm going to tape down the book page onto the paper that came with the actual frame. Once I have that piece taped down, then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add another a piece that I cut out from my silhouette. Now this says it's time to bloom and I'm just going to go ahead and peel it, put it down and peel it off. This vinyl is vinyl from the Dollar Tree. It is the flowered vinyl and I thought this turned out super cute. The wording is a little hard to see but the flowers look adorable and I absolutely love how this turned out. Let me know what you guys think about this one. Now for this project we're going to be making a bookmark and now we could have just used our paper but I wanted this to be a little bit more heavy duty so I'm going to go ahead and just take some of my book pages and glue it onto some cardstock that I had left over from another project. I am just using Elmer's glue stick here to adhere my paper to. I'm going to go ahead and put paper on both sides of this cardstock that way I have a two-sided book page bookmark. It's a a little bit wider than my piece of paper so once I get them all glued on then I'm just going to trim it down a little bit so I have an even bookmark looking piece. So once I have that all done I'm going to go ahead and take some more vinyl. I cut out this a really cute bunny and I thought he would be pretty adorable to adhere to the front of our uh, paper. So once I get him adhered there, I'm going to go ahead and take my crocodile. I'm going to cut out a hole up at the top and then I'm going to take some ribbon and I'm just going to cut the ribbon and tie it up at the top for the piece that hangs out of the book. I'm just using a multicolored ribbon here that kind of said spring and Easter to me. Uh, you could use any ribbon that you want here. I'm just going to go ahead, put it through the hole and then tie a knot up at the top. That is it for this super cute project. I love making bookmarks. There's so many options that you can make and they're super cute and customizable. Let me know what you guys think about this one.
So for this project, we're going to make a card, and I've had these multicolored cards in my stash for quite a while. I got this giant box at Hobby Lobby, and I've been using them for a long time. So we're just going to take one of these cards, we're going to trace around our book page, and then we're going to cut out our book page to be the size of our card. Then we're going to take a glue stick, and we're going to apply the glue to our card, and then we're going to attach our book page to the card. This is super easy. I'm just using a glue stick, like I said. I'm going to put a good amount of glue on here because I don't want the book page to come up from the card. Once I have that all lined up on my card and attached, then I'm ready to uh, attach the front of my card. So after I did the bloom, it's time to bloom, and I realized that the vinyl on top of the book pages is kind of hard to see, I decided to add this little white piece on top of this book page just using some Elmer's glue here again. This was just a scrap piece that I had on hand just trying to reuse some of the things that I had. So we're going to glue this to the very front of our book pages and then once I have that glued there we're going to add another little vinyl piece. Now if you don't have a cutting machine like I said earlier in the video that is okay. You can use stickers, you can use printouts from the computer, you could use all kinds of different things. A stencil, anything Thing would really work. I was going for a Easter theme. I used some Dollar Tree vinyl for this one as well. This is the pink sparkly vinyl that they have at Dollar Tree. So these are just some bunny ears that were left over from the bookmark. These came out of those bunny ears. So then I'm going to go ahead and apply that to the front of our card and then that is it for this project. I think it's super easy, super simple, and I love how I used some scrap pieces to repurpose and make another project. Let me know what you guys think about this one. So for this project, we're going to take this bunny that I got at a garage sale. It looks like it was probably from the Dollar Tree at one time. It's a little bit older and kind of worn. I probably didn't need to paint it this gray color. I'm going to go ahead and put a book page on top of our bunny, but I thought that it possibly might show through, so I decided to go ahead and give it a couple coats of this gray paint. So once it dried, I'm going to go ahead and take my book page. I tried to <laughs> trace around my bunny. It's on a raised piece, so it was a little bit difficult to get the shape. Um, I had to go on there a couple times to try and trace over the bunny. I'm going to go ahead and use some scissors and just cut uh, around the bunny shape that I traced onto the paper. So once I get it cut out, you can tell that I am missing a couple of pieces <laughs> or like some significant pieces on the bunny. But we're going to go ahead and glue it on anyway. It's going to get covered up the pieces that end up um, missing on top of the bunny. So I'm going to use some Mod Podge and I'm just going to cover the entire bunny with the Mod Podge and then we're going to go ahead and lay our book page on top of the bunny. So this is just super easy decoupaging here. So once it gets on there and it's stuck on really well, then we're going to go ahead and use our sanding block and we're going to go around the edges and get off any of the excess pieces of the book page. Now these are really thin pieces of paper so the sanding block works really well um, and you can go around and it's a pretty quick method to getting off any kind of paper. Then we're going to take some hot glue and we're going to add some hot glue down at the bottom along with this green grass that I had on hand. You can find this at springtime at the Dollar Tree. We're just going to go ahead and add that at the bottom of our bunny. Once that is glued onto the 
bottom, I go ahead and I'm going to add a few embellishments here. So there's a piece missing over there by the bunny's nose. We're going to add a ribbon there to cover that up. And then I've really been loving these watercolors that I got at the Dollar Tree. So I'm going to use some of these watercolors to add some um, details to our bunny. I really love how this turned out. So we're just going to paint right onto the book page. Let me know what you guys think of this one. I think he's super adorable. Let me know if you're going to make one of these yourself. Thank you.